Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name is Andy, my channel is Finding Value. Uh, today I'm going to go over oil, natural gas, go over a couple of companies. I'm going to take a little bit bigger picture view on, on a lot of the companies. And the majority of companies in the sector, they all perform roughly the same. I mean, they, they go up and down roughly together. Uh, so if I go over a couple companies, you can say that that's a good representation of the overall group. Now, Recap's a little bit different. That's an exploration company. We saw that pull back. And the pullback there, I think it's probably from the release of the lawsuit. It's probably the short sellers trying to obtain money from them, saying that they did something unlawful uh, with their news releases. Uh, I don't see anything where they're unlawful. Uh, it sounds to me that a bunch of short squeezers got hurt pretty bad, and they're trying to gain back some of the money that they lost. That's that's kind of my guess. But um, if, and again, I don't know the entire background on Reconnaissance Energy Africa, but if the company isn't lying, well, then it'd be of, of great, great value because um, then it means that everything is, uh, you know, outright uh, trustworthy, kind of upfront, uh, that they've been acting with, um, that their communications are accurate. I don't see any reason why they would be lying. I don't see any lying that I can tell. Uh, I don't know why a company would do a joint venture and have plans to do a joint venture if they were lying. Uh, so I'm of the ilk, I guess, um, that they're not lying. Would I add down here? Maybe. Uh, I, I, I already have my, my stake in there. Uh, I'm pretty set. I'm riding through it. Remember, I... I position size this correctly. So if things go up and down on me, I'm, I'm going to ride through it. Because if they have what they have and the size that they have, then it'd be a very good opportunity uh, to ride it higher. But that's, that's my opinion. Again, this is just my financial opinion. Please don't take it as advice. Do your own due diligence uh, and make sure that these companies um, are good for you. But we've got the oil here. It's on the left-hand side. I'm going get, to get my mug out of the way. But here's oil, and we've been, we, we bounced up, hit it again, we're coming up. We sold off a little bit today. Uh, another thing, if you guys are watching part of the uranium camp, uh, uranium's chart looks very similar to this as well. This oil chart, very similar. It's not the same, but it's similar. They rhyme. Uh, they're of the same, I, I'm gonna say it again, of the same ilk. They are the same kind. But we haven't broken out of this, this upper trend line here, the, the uptrend. We've got a little, you know, sell off day to day. Is this going to continue lower? It very well could. It could, could head lower. Maybe not. Uh, again, oil is of incredible value. Uh, it is still compressing against gold. Uh, I think that we have an energy crisis coming up in oil over the winter. Potential crisis. We'll see what, what happens. Oil is a substitute for natural gas uh, and coal. So they can burn more oil in some instances, maybe not in the same plant, but they can switch fuel types uh, and ramp up other fuel types versus others. So um, oil is definitely cheaper than natural gas in a lot of the areas in the world, and they're going to be substituting oil where they can. So I think oil is in a very good spot to continue higher over time. In the short term, we could see a pullback. We could see something even on the lines of a pullback like this. Uh, but over over the long term, you know, medium to long term, I still think we're, we're, we're going higher. And natural gas, natural gas has been doing incredibly well. We just put in kind of a bullish engulfing pattern right here. Uh, this could go higher. And when looking at the charts back here, you would have thought, oh, we're gonna get a nice big pullback. Well, it came to the 50 day and just launched on higher. So, my take on this and where the values are, where the money's flowing, and with the crisis potentially coming this winter, I'm not doing anything. I'm holding on. Uh, I have been holding on the entire time. I've been accumulating on dips, big dips, and just holding on and riding it. That's been my strategy. If you guys want to adopt that strategy, that's up to you. Uh, I'm not telling anybody what to do here, uh, but that's, that's been my strategy. Now, why do I have that strategy? Because when I look at the oil price from a big long-term perspective, 1950 to 2020, a 50-year glance at oil, 
we've been heading higher here and we've we've come into a couple periods uh, where we've gone sideways but oil's gone ballistic from 1970 to 1980 we went in a sideways consolidation phase all the way till 98 99 that's when we had our commodity buy signal we had a buy signal in 70 a buy signal in 98 99 this thing's rocketing higher from 99 all the way till uh, 2008 then we had our pullback and we've got our consol consolidation period from 08 all the way till 2020 it's about a 10-year consolidation 2019 28 20 somewhere in that range now we're coming up and we're breaking this pattern last time we broke the pattern back here it was game on now we're breaking the pattern here again and i think it's game on uh here's oil i what i did is i just zoomed in uh from 05 to 2020 here's the breakout could this come back and do a retest it could don't rule it out doesn't mean it will it could back test or do a retest of this breakout where we break out and come back and retest and then head higher but sometimes it doesn't sometimes it doesn't do that now this guy when you when, when we look at it and what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull up something to show you guys what last time did because a lot of these things they definitely rhyme and when i look at boom this guy here and i'm going to do some painting on this guy here's the last bull market that kind of went through and what did we do there we we pulled up and then we came back and back tested so we we did do and there it is right there Let me back out so we, we we pulled we went sideways pulled out back tested and then launched we could be doing the same thing we're going to come up back test and then launch the big move i think is in front of us and our guide is residential real estate in the housing starts that is our inflationary measurement stick that's the leader and then that increases the m2 money supply the inflation follows a year or two later uh, we've already got a bunch of money printing the inflation's already started uh, and and the real estate expansion phase is going to be what sustains the inflation rate and the demographics and i'll i'll get you guys another video uh, released today on that and we've so we've broken out we could back test maybe not uh, I'm not too worried. The conditions are favorable for oil to continue higher. Going back to the oil charts, looking at some of my favorite plays. We have SM Energy on the bottom here. Can't really zoom in much more than what I've got here. We've got SM Energy on the bottom here. In fact, let me open it up here. So here's SM Energy. It's right here on the bottom. We've got a, I don't know why it's not allowing me to show that. There we go. Here's SM Energy. We've got a descending wedge pattern. It wedged all up in the corner. We broke to the upside and we're continuing to move higher. There's going to be times where we're gonna hit some points like this point here. Uh, we could do, and we've done this a lot, a let me draw it in a, a cup and we could put a handle so this is possible to do that you got to make sure that you can survive through it here is the projected move is something like this if it were to break and now we're back all the way up here and then we could do another cup and handle pattern as this thing comes all the way back up it may not make this pattern but it seems like these these guys are making patterns that like the cup and handle now here's the last bull market um it chopped off the bottom on me but uh kind of go through there looks like we we went up all the way up there almost pretty close to that went all the way up back and forth and broke down and i think we're going to come all the way back up again 
and I think we are going to break. It's possible to break these highs back here and make new highs. It is possible. It could go all the way up there, but we'll see. Again, I don't know the future. Uh, I know that the valuations are still good. I know that we're doing a lot of money printing. We have large real negative rates, the largest we've ever seen. We have an energy crisis. I don't see why it couldn't do it. I mean, it's it's possible. I've also got the one here, uh, Centennial Resource Development, CDEV. Uh, this guy has a descending wedge. It was ready to go in 2019. And we broke down uh, for the shutdown for that, the virus. Now we're coming back up. We created a cup and handle pattern. We broke out, we're, we did a retest, and now we're moving. We're, we're moving on up. It looks fantastic. Now, I drew this across, this line here, not just for the cup and handle pattern, but also to show you that last breakout, if we were to have a last breakout without, without the virus, um, we're roughly a little bit above where we were in 2019. And I think that this has a long way to go up, a very long way. So I'm holding on to my shares. There's, there's, I'm not going to sell it to anybody, guys. I, I, I don't know what, we, what you'd be doing selling shares at a time where you've got oil that's just breaking out of its pattern uh, on, on the big long-term view and all the market conditions that are favorable and natural gas looks great as well. So I, what I wanted to do here is I wanted to make sure everyone has the big picture view, the big picture view on oil. Uh, natural gas is going to go higher. That's, that's my guess. Um, I don't see why that wouldn't, especially if we have a cold winter, it could go way higher. So valuation wise, market condition wise, everything's at our back. And, and when it's at your back, you just float downstream. Uh, this isn't something that you try getting cute with and trading in and out. Uh, come up with a good solid portfolio, come up with companies that you like, uh, and then choose what you want to do. And then stick with the plan for a while. Uh, if, you're, if you're trading in and out, is it working for you? That's my question. If it's working for you, continue to do what, what works for you. If it's not working for you, if you don't have very good gains at this point, if you've been on the channel for over a year, you're not up over 50% or something like that, um, or 40% or whatever it is. And it depends on what companies you guys have went into. Because some of the diversified mining companies, they've been, they have been lagging recently. But if you're not up in some of the oil companies, I would say greater than 40%, then you're doing something wrong. Trading in and out's not working because a lot of these have done incredibly well in the oil sector. Um, so I would, at least what I did, is I used to trade in and out. I don't do that anymore. Uh, and what I do is I find the value. I come up with a portfolio strategy. I get a couple of companies I really like. I put 5% of my portfolio or less in each position, roughly of that amount, 2 to 5%, depending on what I gather as being pretty risky. And then I just ride it up when the market conditions and the, and the charts look good like this. And we could run through some bumpy sections in the future in any of these assets that that may go down and have pullbacks of 30 or 50%. I'm just gonna ride through it as long, so long that the housing starts are doing well. So long that real estate remains robust because I don't think we're gonna have uh, a, a crash if that's the case. And I think that interest rates will eventually start to inch up. I don't know how they're gonna hold them down. I really don't know how they're gonna manage that, but. That's not my problem, how they're gonna manage it. And I don't necessarily need to figure out a solution for them. All I know is that inflation's here. And if they hold rates down, you're just gonna get massive real negative rates and money's gonna move over into this stuff anyway. If you guys like this content, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.